the Lamb. First and foremost, I want to give all praises and all glory to Yahawa by Hashem Shai. I want to give double honors to the apostles of Great Middleton who do rule well. Salutations to the men of the Hope and Sensei Elect. This is Brother Makazar from Trinidad Camp. Just want to do a little edification for the elect's sake. And the name of this lesson would be Are You Feeling Carnal? Are You Feeling Carnal? Alright? And, you know, what I mean by Are You Feeling Carnal? You know, you feeling filthy you feeling down in the spirit like you know like you're like you're going back into the world or like you know you're just defiling your 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 white garment which is the righteousness of the saints you know it's like you're feeling icky you know you're, you're not feeling like yourself you're not feeling like you're in the spirit well one of the reasons why you could be feeling that way is it is because of the crowd that you are around all right the crowd that you are around, there are a whole you know plethora of reasons why that could be happening, but mainly it is it's just you know these spirits that out here, all right. The spirits, the elements of the world, all right, they be plaguing in your mind, and what they try to do, they try to get you from this truth, they try to steer you from your straight direction and swerve you to until they eventually turn you, you know back in a 180 degree into the world all right and you have to be able to acknowledge those spirits in this truth to acknowledge when those spirits trying to steer you all right this is luke 22 and verse 31 and the lord yahweh said simon simon behold satan had desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat it says but i have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Alright? So, it happened to Peter. The Lord tell Peter, hey, I pray for you. But when, you, when he, he designed to save you, he designed to get you from this truth. But when you regain your strength, alright, he pray that you, 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 don't, you don't lose your faith. Because sometimes we feel down. We feel, you know, we, we do a, we do carnal shit. Alright? And we will feel like, like you know, like, like we're not worthy. But sometimes those demons will work even more on that feeling and say, well, yeah, you know, I'm not worthy, so best I just leave this truth. All right? So Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai prayed for Peter that that didn't happen so that Peter would remain in the faith. And now when he regained his strength, now he have a testimony, now he, be, he well equipped on how to deal with those spirits and how to acknowledge those spirits so he could talk to his brethren and say, hey, you know what, don't let them spirits conquer you. Strengthen yourself, you know. This is what happened to me. This is why I did. This is how I strengthened myself. All right. So it happens to all of us. All right. It happens to all of us. So when you, when, so you are to be able to strengthen one another, as Paul said, strengthen ye one another's bowels. He he even went on to say, strengthen my bowels also. All right. So we have to strengthen one another because these demons out here trying to sift us. That was feeling kind of, you know, especially when we on work. Sometimes you're working amongst two thirds, all right. You know, there's the scripture that says, "Um, train up a child in the way that he must go, and in the end he will not depart from it." But guess what? You could train up a child in this truth as much as you want, but as long as the child around those elements growing up, when the child reach an age where they could choose what they want to do, guess what? Chances are they might choose the world because why? Because the world seems more enticing. The world seems more fun. The world seems more alluring because that is the attract, the attraction of the world to allure you, allure you as the scripture said, the lust of the eyes. All right? So the world would actually cause them to stray from the truth. So you could train them as much as, they, as you want. All right? But if you were around a group of only or a village of only, you know, righteous men, that that child will not depart from that way. And when they reach manhood, they will maintain that way. All right? But if they, among both elements, chances are when they reach that teenage age, you know, they will choose the world. All right? I'm not saying that it will always happen, but chances are they would choose the world because it seems more fun. You know, when you come to that teenage age, you want to have fun. You, you want to go out. You want to do things. You see all your other peers doing these things. You want to try it. You want to do it. All right, and that is some of the things that happen to us in this truth the attraction, the allure of this world. It causes our mind to stray. 
It causes us to think carnal shit, to do carnal shit. And then when you entertain the idea, then you start to feel, you know, that heaviness, that, that weight of, and that guilt and that nakedness. All right? So the one simple way to counteract that is by what? By being in the spirit. Trying your best to remain in the spirit. You know, read. All right? Envelope yourself in the words of the Lord. So that you could fight off and counteract those spirits. Because those spirits, they're like parasites. All right? So when you have parasites, parasites need certain, you know, things to thrive. All right? So they would, they would, they would, they would you know, parasites would affect your mind. Making you feel like you're always hungry so that you will always eat to satisfy them. Making you always want to eat sweet food so that you will satisfy them. It's the same thing with these spirits. These unclean spirits, they are parasites in your mind. Alright? They are parasites in your mind. And they would actually put thoughts in your mind making you believe it's your own thoughts. To have that inner battle. Trying to stray you off. So you have to be able to counteract them. And these scriptures, they are your medicine. Alright? Just like Satan desired to save Peter, Satan designed to save all the elect. But Yahweh had prayed for them. What he said, he said, let me, let me read it real quick. This is the book of John 17. Um, Just bear me one second. Ah, here it is. This is John 17, verse 15. I pray not thou, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from evil. So the Lord prayed for the elect that the Lord keep us from evil. That you know Satan don't don't get to our minds and turn us into the world. When you see a man leave this truth and go back into the world, guess what? He wasn't covered by Yahweh Shai's prayer. Yahweh Shai didn't pray for him. The scripture said the kingdom of heaven is like a man casting a net into the sea and bringing in good and bad fish. So some bad fish is going to come into the, into the fold. But the Lord is going to get rid of them. By means of what? By means of the sifter, which is Satan. Satan is going to get rid of those men. All right? He's doing his job. But he would also try because Satan like, like white blood cells. You know, sometimes they said white blood cells can't differentiate between the red blood cells and pathogens. So sometimes they might eat up the, the red blood cells too. That's how Satan is. Satan doing his job by getting rid of the bad. But he would also get rid of, try to get rid of the good in between. So the Lord, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahushai, put up a defense to those good. That they won't be sifted. That they won't be eaten up. Alright? But you have to also help. You have to help by being in these words. So that when that carnal feeling comes, you know how to fight it. Alright? By what you're not let's say you're on a construction site, you're the only brother there, and you're around a hundred niggas. And all these niggas talking about is adultery and all sorts of different carnal, you know, conversations. Alright? Then you might, you know, start because you you cool with a few of them, you might end up in the talk and then you realize that you're carrying on this conversation and you start feeling filthy. You start feeling calm, you start feeling worldly. Why? Because you also been carrying on the conversation. To be honest, in this truth, you have to be somewhat reclusive. You have to be reclusive. I mean, you just like you know withdrawing from the world, withdrawing from the world, so that you know you don't. You know, let, let me go. Let me go to it. This is um Second Timothy chapter two and verse four. It says, no man that wore it entangled himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. So you can't, you can't entangle yourself with the, the affairs of this life. Don't try to go back into the world. Stay out of the darkness. The Lord called you out of darkness into this marvelous light. So stay in the light. Stay out of the darkness. Because guess what? There are lots of spirits in the darkness that want to have you back there. And guess what? They will hold you stronger than you were ever held before. So stay away from the darkness. All right, stay away from the darkness. This is First Corinthians chapter fifteen and verse um, thirty-three. It says, "Be not deceived; evil communication corrupt good manners." All right, evil communication, and that is evil communication that they have in the world. As the scripture says, they are of the world. So speak they of the world. All right. 
So if you have the spirit and they of the world, then guess what? They ain't going to want to have spiritual conversations. So then therefore, you're going to stop having a spiritual conversation because you realize it don't make sense. But then you always hear these kind of conversations and then, you know, you also in the world because you're, you're, you're living in the world, but you're not of it. You might end up being dragged in. Even communication corrupt good manners. And there's a reason why you start feeling carnal because you, you, you indulge in the carnal conversations. Then you start talking about the parties you used to go to and the hoes you used to have sex and the, and the you this you used to do and the shit. It, guess what? And that is what actually brings you back into the world. It could even happen amongst the brethren. They start talking about worldly things, things that they, they used to do. And then they realize that they want to try these things. They want to, let's, let's go and do this. Let's go and do that. And guess what? It takes you back to a place that you didn't want to be. Believers in Philippians, Paul said, if I build again the thing that I destroyed, then I might become a, a transgressor. Don't try to build against that man. All right? Forget that man. Nail him to the cross. Forget him. Forget your old ways. All right? If you talk about the shit you used to do, talk about it with a repulsive mindset. Don't, don't reminisce and laugh and kicks about it. You don't want to be in that mindset. You want to get rid of that mindset. All right? Hey, it might, it might be a woman. There might be a woman that you see and you like. All right? And you like this woman. You like this woman. And she fine as hell. All right? You like this woman. But you know, she ain't going to be attracted to the truth. So you have to present yourself a certain way. Your beard might be too big. So you know what? She don't like all that hair. So you might want to trim your beard down a little bit to look more pleasing to her. You know, you might want to tap into that worldly guy. You know? Talk a certain language for her. Alright? Talk that worldly language for her. That worldly lingo. So she will, you know, she would feel you. You don't want to act too, too, too Christianish, so to speak. Alright? You don't want her to know that you have affiliation with the truth so that she could be attracted to you because you heard her say that now nah, she don't like these GMS men. Alright? These Hebrew Israelites. She don't like them. So you wanna, you know, you wanna attract her. So you 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 tap into the worldly guy. To, to, you know, to get her attention. And then when you get her attention, then you know what? She wants a lot of attention. So then you have to you know, be there for her, right? So then you have to be in that, you know, in the, how to say, in that character, you know, a lot of the times just to please that woman. And then before you know it, you realize that, what the hell are you doing? You acting like a woolly ass nigga just for this woman. And it can happen to the sisters too. All right, the sisters might, might find a guy and they, they do the same thing. And then, you know, when you realize, you realize that you're slipping. You realize that you're slipping because why? You're doing shit out of character. And being out of character, just like um, this guy, I think it's Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger, they said when he was acting his last role as Joker, he was in character so much that he actually had to take therapy to come out of character. All right, he tapped into that joker spirit so much that he had to get therapy to come out of it, and that would happen to you when you try to get in the character of that worldly man. When you catch yourself, you realize that you you gone so far that you need a lot of help to to to, to cast off that worldly man. Don't tap into it. Don't tap into that worldly man. All right, what what did Job said? You know, maintain your ways, maintain your ways before him. Maintain your integrity. Alright? If you have to lose yourself for a woman, then lose the woman. Alright? Lose that woman. Um, I'm going to go to this one. This is um, Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 26. It says, The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduces it at him. The way of the wicked goes to juice here. The way of the wicked go make you want to go back into the world. Scripture says, envy not the oppressor and choose none of his ways. The loss of the eyes. You might see this fancy car and you might, you might just be focusing on getting that fancy car, getting this fancy clothes. And you, you know, you, you're doing all sorts of things just to get that. You're putting in extra hours. You realize you're not studying, you're not doing the Lord's work because you're trying to get worldly, worldly achievements. Don't do it. Don't do it. Those things will have you carnal. Those things will have you carnal. Right? 
This is um, Ecclesiasticus chapter 9 and verse 15. It says, hey, we read 11. It says, Envy not the glory of a sinner, for thou knowest not what shall be his end. Don't envy the glory of a sinner. Don't envy the world. Don't envy this world that you know that you want to be a part of it. Don't do it. All right? It says, delight not in the thing that the ungodly have pleasure in. Don't do it. Don't delight in the thing that the ungodly have pleasure in. Don't try to tap into that world. It says, but remember, they shall not go unpunished in their grave. <clears throat> They're not going to go unpunished. All right? So if you don't want to be judged with the world, then refrain from the things of the world. It says, keep thee far from the man that had the power to kill, so shall thou not um, doubt the fear of death. So as if thou come unto him, make no fault, lest he take away thy life presently. He says, remember that thou goest in the midst of stairs, and that thou walkest upon the battlements of the city. It says, as near as thou canst, um, guess at thy neighbor and consult with the wise. All right. So there's the main point here I wanted to go to. It says, let thy talk be with the wise. That is who you have to have them conversations with. All right, the majority of conversations supposed to be with the wise and let all thy communication the law of the most high. All right, like brothers, when they're together, they're always talking about scriptures. It all something always brings you back to the scriptures, and that is where your mindset's supposed to be. What did what did um what did Joshua said? Even Moses said it. He says when you're lying down, when you're up, when you rise, when you talk with your neighbor, let your communication be with the, with the laws of the most high. All right. And let just men eat and drink with thee. Yeah, that is, who's, that is your entourage, just men. They won't have you feeling carnal. All right? When you, when you come together with the brotherhood, it's so rejuvenating. You feel so rejuvenated in the spirit. You know why? Because you're going out into the world, into all these elements, all those spirits, they be targeting your mind. But when you come to the brotherhood, those spirits have to back off because there are lots of angels gathering around. So you feel rejuvenated in the spirit when you come to camp. This alone proves the elements that you deal with on a daily basis. So if on a daily basis you're dealing with that, think about you now tapping into that Holy Spirit. You know, you're going to feel more and more down, more and more carnal, more and more naked. All right? It says verse 16, And let just men eat with thee, and let thy glory and be in the fear of Yahabah Shemel Shai. Don't glory about, you know, whose wife you had sex with or what you did in this party on carnival. Nah, that is not shit to glory about. That is shit to be ashamed of. That is shit to be ashamed of. That is shit that you did that was, that merit death. But the Lord took you as, as I think it was in First John 3 and verse 18, somewhere around there. Now we know that we have passed some life from death unto life. So why are we glorying about dead things that the dead man used to do? All right, the Lord passed us from death unto life, so no glory about them things. All right, it says Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1. It says, We we def and therefore we ought to give more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. Give more earnest heed. It says, Lest at any time we shall let them slip. They could slip because you would slip, because you allow yourself to slip. Because you won't circumspect to realize that you were slipping because you were stopping into that carnal man. Because of a woman, because you wanted to get, you know, worldly things. Because probably you were on a job site and you thought probably it's just cool to be, you know, it was okay to be cool with these niggas. So you, you tapped into that spirit just so that you could blend in. Nah, you don't need to blend in. Just stand different. Alright? Don't let these things slip. Because before you know it, you slipped and you didn't even know you slipped and now you can't get up. All right, is the final precept here. This is um, Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16. It says, I said, This I said, then walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the loss of the flesh. Walk in the spirit means you have to always be in the spirit. Read the scriptures so that you would always be rejuvenated day by day. Paul said, I die daily, but he in one man is rejuvenated, roughly paraphrasing, day by day. Why? Because he always tapping into the spirit. It says, for the flesh lusted against the, 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 the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another, so that you cannot do the things which you would. 
because it's a constant struggle so that the things that you want to do you can't do because you know the worldly man trying to re is like bruce banner and the hulk that worldly man trying to claw his way out but you have to fight against it and as according to first corinthians 9 you have to keep your body under subjection so you have to fight you have to fight because the fight ain't done until you exit this flesh the fight ain't done till you exit this flesh. All right? Verse 25, it says, If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. So you have to walk in the Spirit daily. Do your best to walk in the Spirit daily. And fight that flesh. All right? Fight that sp carnal spirit. All right? And this is a message to the brothers as well as the sisters. All right? So with that, I want to give all praises and all glory to Yahabah, Shemir, and Shai. I want to give double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone that do rule well. Salutations to the men of the whole family, Sensei Lek. This is your brother Makazar from the Trinidad Camp saying Shalom and stay strong. Shalom.